Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and yesterday Apple released watchOS 11.5 RC. watchOS 11.5 RC or release candidate is available to developers and public beta testers and should be the same version released to the public if there's no additional issues. This update came in at 464 megabytes on my Apple Watch Ultra 2 in black titanium and this released alongside many other updates iOS 18.5 RC, iPadOS 18.5 RC, macOS 15.5 RC, tvOS and HomePod OS 18.5 RC, VisionOS 2.5 RC, as well as older updates, including iPadOS 17.7.7. Unfortunately, Apple is not providing iOS versions of that just yet. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the build number and we'll talk about what's new. So if we go into our settings here, we'll go to general, then about, you can see the build number is 22T572. And this particular build, like I mentioned before, should be the final version unless there's an additional issue and we need a watchOS 11.5 RC2. Hopefully this is stable enough, but we'll have to test it over the next few days and see what it's like. As far as new features, well, the first new feature has to do with purchasing using Apple Watch. Just like when you're on your Apple TV and you want to purchase something using it, you can use your Apple Watch, iPhone or iPad, verify with it, and then purchase maybe a TV show or something else on the Apple TV. You can now do that with the Apple TV app on third-party devices, such as a TV, maybe LG or Samsung TV, and you can verify that purchase directly through your iPhone or Apple Watch. So that's something they've updated with watchOS 11.5. They've also added a new watch face. They do this every year around this time and they've added a new Pride Harmony watch face. If we go into it, you can see it here and I have a complication there for activity and it just gives me my calories. If we go to edit, you can edit the complication, change it to whatever you'd like, whether that's battery or something else. We'll select battery and you can see what it looks like there. So we have the battery there and it gives that information. If we let it go to sleep, it looks a little bit different as well. So when it's asleep, it turns into these lines. And so if we pick it up like this, you'll see it fades into the solid colors. And just like on the Apple Watch, if you're on the home screen here and we lock the phone on an always on display, you'll see that it just switches to lines. We can tap on it, swipe up, and then it's animated. I would love to see animations brought to all the wallpapers on iOS, but it's nice to see that animate, swipe down, bring it back up, and it will continue to animate. So you've got sort of a matching wallpaper on your watch and your iPhone. Also, along with this, they introduced a new Apple Watch Band. So this sort of matches this and goes along with it, just like they do every year. Now, there are some bug fixes, but along with this, Apple also updated a couple other things. If we go into the App Store, they've updated the Apple Invites app. They've updated it with stability and performance enhancements. What that means specifically, we don't know, but let me know if you're using the Apple Invites app. I don't use it a whole lot, but it does look pretty nice and maybe hints at what we'll get with iOS 19. Along with this, Apple is also adding new arcade games to Apple Arcade. You'll see they posted it on the Apple Newsroom, where five new games will launch on June 5th, and you'll see Uno, Uno Arcade Edition. If we scroll down here, you'll see What the Car by Triband. This will also be available on Vision Pro, apparently, Lego Hill Climb Adventures Plus, and much more. So these will be available very soon, starting in June, just before WWDC 2025. If we switch back to my modular watch face, we'll talk more about that a little bit later, but Apple has resolved a specific issue that they've mentioned. In fact, they've resolved an issue that may prevent your iPhone from showing a notification when the watch battery is fully charged. This is something that I forgot about, and then I saw this pop up using the betas, and it was nice to see again. If we go to my photos, I took a screenshot of it. And you can see that here where it says Aaron's Apple watch is fully charged. So you'll now get those notifications again, since it was apparently not working for many people. I forgot it even existed and now it's back. Apple also published some release notes. However, there's not a whole lot here in their public facing release notes. Basically they just resolved an issue with store kit. So they haven't mentioned anything else other than that. Of course, we do expect some security updates as well, and you'll see that here once they're updated, usually after it's released to the public. We'll see all of the security updates, what that entails, what they've patched, and if it's worth updating with all the security updates or if there's none at all. 
As far as any future updates, well, we could see some of those on May 15th. I mentioned this in the iOS 18.5 RC video, where every year around May 15th, Apple introduces new accessibility features launching with the next version. This was shown with iOS 18 with eye tracking and music haptics and more, and we can expect the same sort of announcement this year. So next week, we should see something along those lines and see if it includes anything new with Apple Watch as well. As far as the overall performance, well, so far it's been pretty good. I haven't really noticed any problems. I've been using it. However, I did mention in another video where I hurt my wrist with it. It was on my wrist here and I sort of bruised it somehow. And I'm not sure how that happened, but I haven't been wearing this for about a week. But testing the betas and the public version, I didn't have too many issues, but I know some people did. But as far as overall performance, you'll see things are opening fast. If we go to an app maybe that I don't use regularly, we'll go into noise. It's pretty quick usually, no real issues there. When it comes to battery life, I know some people had issues with battery life using the previous version, and I thankfully didn't have that issue, but some people did. So let's go down to battery life here. And under battery, we saw that it was already at 100%, but if we go down to battery health, I'm typically at 100%, even on the Apple Watch Ultra 2 from last year. So it seems to be holding up very well, probably better than the iPhone. No real issues there. And let's see if we've gone down at all. We're still at 100% charge since the start of this video. I've really had no issues with it. It will easily get me through a couple days at this point. As far as if you should install watchOS 11.5 RC, I would recommend it if you're on beta four, if you're not on beta four yet and you're on previous versions, you can try it out as this should be the stable version, but just keep in mind that there could be additional bugs until it's released to the public. And even sometimes after that, we have it, but so far it seems good, but we'll talk more about that in the weekend follow up if there's anything worth mentioning. As far as the watchOS 11.5 public release, well, we expect that on Monday. Typically, Apple releases their major updates on Monday, and we can expect that on the 12th. So if everything is the same as previous years, we can expect all of the updates to release on May 12th. After that, we can expect watchOS 11.6 beta 1, and then on June 9th at WWDC 2025, we'll get iOS 19 beta 1 along with watchOS 12 beta 1. What that will include, we really haven't heard much about watchOS other than it might look more and more like VisionOS and iOS 19 to sort of make everything look the same. We don't know this for sure, but we'll have to wait and see. And of course, we'll have watchOS 12 released to the public, typically around September, usually around the iPhone 17 launch and the new watchOS or watch series 11 models, or maybe Apple Watch Ultra 3. That's what we can expect as far as that. If you're wondering if you should turn the beta off at this point, well, you can, but I probably wouldn't do that until the public version is out. So if we go to check for updates, wait for it under beta updates, you could turn these off if you'd like to, but again, I'd probably wait until the public version is out and see if there's a different build. If you have the same build number, there's no update and you just had it early. As far as the watch face I'm using, let's go ahead and take a quick look. As many people ask, we'll press and hold here. And this is the modular watch face. And if we go to edit, you can see the complications I'm using. So I have numerals, the color is just all of them. And then I have the weather in the upper left with the temperature, the calendar in the top. In the middle, I have an app called Lumi. It shows me golden hour or sunset or the best time to take photos and video. And you can see the options here. So sunrise, first light, and quite a few other options as well. It's a paid app, but I paid for this quite some time ago and I just like the look of it and I've been using it ever since. I have activity, then compass, and then messages. So everything else is pretty standard. So if you wanted to set up your watch the same way, that's how I have it set up. So that's everything with watchOS 11.5 RC. If you found any additional features or bug fixes, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. And of course, I'll link this wallpaper in the description like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.